So if I make a video, if it's a video where I'm calling out, pointing out obvious sin, people get so bothered. And what's the, <clears throat> the first thing they say? Who are you to judge? We shouldn't judge them. Let God judge them. I don't care how foolish the behavior is. I don't care how egregious or obvious the sin is. We're not supposed to say anything, even if it's something kind of silly like, I don't know, Grandma and her guitar putting the Holy Ghost on this boy. Not allowed to judge that, not allowed to say anything about that. What about when someone is in church and they have, I guess, supposedly caught the Holy Ghost and they want to go to dancing and then you go grab the old lady's walker and you want to get your little praise break, your praise dance on with that? Can't judge that. Can't judge that. Not not even Spider-Man, the guy in church dressed up as Spider-Man, can't judge that. No, no. That's just the way they want to express themselves, and so leave that alone. But what about if it gets a little serious where there's some control and the pastor is telling his own his own members to go out and if they want to eat, eat grass. Close your mouth. Okay, I see food outside. Look at that. Look at that food. Be quiet. Be quiet. Okay, go and eat. Go and eat. Go eat outside. Go, quickly. So you mean to tell me we can't judge anything? We can't point out anything. We're supposed to sit back and let everything and anything happen. Just sit there in silence. Is that what some of you want us to believe? So recently done a few videos where I've covered some people who have just been out of pocket. Of late though, covering the great and wonderful, the man, as he calls himself, Jamal Bryant, been a lot of pushback. For the most part, most smart Christians understand that that guy, what he's doing is sinful. He's unrepentant. He is arrogant as arrogance can get. But you got some folks that will say, let God judge him. Who are you to judge? And I'm just wondering, what are these people? Now, I'm going to talk, tell you why. We're going to cover why these people tend to want to deflect and leave these people alone. But this particular person does not exhibit any traits of a Christian, other than the fact that he gets up in the pulpit and he preaches 
But when you compare that to a lot of his other behavior, well, then at some point in time, we've just got to call it out and say, hey, that's wrong. Remember, he's the person that said that Jesus spent 85% of his life out of order. There's and Jesus at 30 accepted his ministry. Bishop Bellis at 30, Jesus accepted his call to ministry at 30. He had been in carpentry since he was 13. He ran the family business since he was 17. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you that 85% um, of Jesus' life, he was out of order. Eighty-five percent of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. For eighty-five percent of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. Eighty-five percent of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. but it did not line up with his divine DNA. When you've got a room full of a bunch of biblically ignorant people, then that stuff can pass. As a matter of fact, even just, just to say that, people are like, hmm, okay, where are you going with that? And maybe you're saying something they never thought of, and the way you make them feel what you're saying is you give some voice inflection, you raise the volume. I'm familiar with how this works, and so what do they do? Those puzzle looks those puzzled thoughts become amen and shouting and so forth. Well, you leave these people off a cliff. These are clearly people who have demonstrated by the fact that they didn't get to walk out or uh, confront you or whatever it was that they were in agreement with. They demonstrate their lack of understanding. Now, what are we to do? We're supposed to let that go. We're supposed to go ahead and, you know what, let God judge that person. Who are you? Well, we're going to cover that who are we to judge and let God judge them? And one common person in the Bible that keeps coming up over and over again, kind of common theme amongst people who say that we ought to leave them alone and, and God can bless that person and people can get saved even at the hands of some. By the way, by the way, people can come to Christ even under the ministry of some heretic. Happens all the time. It happens, but that, that's not because of them, it's in spite of them. It is the power of the gospel under salvation, so much so that not even you can thwart it. Remember, Paul says that there are some people that preach Christ for the right reasons, for good motives. There are some that do so for bad motives. But what does he say? I wish that you would do it. I wish it be done for the right reasons, for good motives. But what does he end up saying? Nevertheless, at least Christ be preached. Because in spite of you, in spite of your foolishness, in spite of your abortive, cheating, side chick having ways, Jamal Bryant, the, the gospel still will go through. The power of the gospel will not be diminished even when you say something as stupid and idiotic and blasphemous as Jesus, who is God, being out of order for 85% of his life. No, Jamal, you've been out of order for almost maybe 100% of your life. There's the problem. And so you expect somebody because you have been found, you have been weighed, and you've been found wanting. You think that other people are the same. And no wonder, because you think that you are the man. But that's not the case. And people come to his defense. I wonder why. I wonder why people come to his defense. We're getting there. We're going to cover that. But he's not the only one that says something stupid. And when I, and I'm using the word stupid. Have you ever wanted just to emphasize the S and the T on stupid? Just so just, just to kind of get just stupid, almost like you're spitting on the screen. He's not the only one that says something stupid. We've got a bunch of stupid stuff lined up, unfortunately. And I can tell you this, every time someone has said something stupid, other people like-minded 
We'll come back, and I'll tell you why I call them like-minded in a second. I'm going to give you the Bible. The reason why they come back and defend them, you know what? I won't tell you yet. I'll tell you why they come back and defend them. But again, every time they've said something stupid, somebody comes back and defends them without fail, without fail. Now, what Jamal Bryant said wasn't the dumbest thing we've heard on this channel. It wasn't the dumbest thing that we pulled out. What's the dumbest thing that we've discovered? We, we've discovered and found some dumb things, some blasphemous things. How about this one? This, uh, this pastor, this apostle, this person who says he has a doctorate, which he doesn't, uh, how ignorant is what he's about to say? 2-7 is what I want up there. Genesis 2-7. Now, keep this verse in mind. Let's reflect. Once upon a time, God went walking through the garden and said this, be fruitful, have dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth over the earth. Do this, do this, reign, subdue all of the things God told Adam to do. Do you know the greatest problem with that? You know the most powerful issue with that? Do you know the most profound challenge with that? Adam did not have a body. Do the research. God's instructions to Adam came before Genesis 2-7. He said, rule, have dominion, be fruitful, multiply. He said that to something with no ears. Something without a physical frame. Yeah, he said, Adam, did. now, some of you heard it. Some of you have not heard it. But it needs to be there. You, you, it needs to be before your eyes. You need to keep saying this stuff. You need to be made aware of this. Some folks aren't. This is how bad it is. You need to understand how bad it is that we reject every instance of nonsense that comes out of these people. Just because a person has a pulpit to preach out of and a church and got a choir behind them does not mean that they were called by God. Stop saying that everybody pointed and then because what they're going to say, touch not the Lord's anointed. Thank you, truth be told. Touch not the Lord's anointed. Well, that passage has nothing to do with these people. It doesn't have anything to do with even the apostles. Because uh, notice that passage wasn't brought up. That 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 uh, declaration was not given by by heaven, even when it came to the apostles Paul and Peter and so forth. No, this had to do when Egypt, not Egypt, but when Israel was coming out and the different kings people like this, people who promote sin, people who are involved in sin, people who are not repentant of their own sin. No one's against a person being caught in sin and then coming around repentant. And then even showing, as John says, as he's talking to the uh, the Pharisees and the rulers, what uh, what fruits of repentance do you have? Well, we don't see that from them. We should be able to see. We should be able to see something. But more than that, we should at least be able to hear it. It be you know what? It'd be one thing if a person says that they were repentant and they really weren't, but. With this particular person, speaking of Jamal Bryant, he didn't even say it. He just, I'm moving on because I'm the man and that will be that. Okay, well, listen, you don't have to deal with me. You don't have to deal with me. You've got to deal with someone much bigger. We'll just give a warning. But again, the issue isn't for them. The issue is for the people that are listening. And it's not just them. Uh, there are many people and we'll cover that. But can I tell you why I think? why I think many people hold to this issue of not judging. First of all, let's deal with this. Are we called to not judge? Well, Jesus says, judge not, lest ye be judged. That's whatever standard or measurement that you use the same we judge you. First, he says, remove the, the plank from your eye. Then you'll, then notice, then there's a progression. You'll do so after, then you'll see more clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye indicating that maybe what's going on in his life isn't as big as yours, but it didn't say don't deal with it. And so there's a reason why people don't want to, to judge. There's two, there, there's, there's probably two reasons I, I, that I can come up with. And we're supposed to judge. We're just supposed to do it rightly, not hypocritically. Paul says, you who tell someone not to steal, do you steal? And so we're supposed to do it hypocritically. But there's two real reasons why people bring this up and do not want to judge or say that we should judge, especially publicly. One, out of ignorance. They simply don't know any better. They've been told this. They have not studied the scripture. They don't understand. They might either not be Christians themselves or might be 
um, immature in terms of handling the word, and they would know that the Bible absolutely does tell us to do so. But the second reason, probably the biggest reason, and really even the more the more indicting reason, not out of ignorance but out of implication. They don't want to be implicated. Had some people, if there's a certain particular crime going on, they want to get away from it because they want to make sure that they're not also caught up in it. Why? Because they're involved in it as well. Maybe not that exact same sin with that person, but their own sin. And so I can't, I don't want you, I do not want you calling out his sexual sin when I'm in sexual sin. I don't want you to do that. Uh, let's let's live and let live. Why? Because I want you to let me live. I want you to leave me alone. I know I'm messed up. I don't want anyone telling me that, which is why I don't want you telling anyone else that. I don't need someone bowling down my alley, and so I don't want you bowling down his alley. Leave him alone. That's one of the biggest issues. Again, I, I, we've seen it, not just me, but we've all seen it over and over and over again. Uh, because let's just be honest, we all have some sin, and it's not like we're just saying, hey, only him, only her, only they should repent. No, we all should be repentant of our sin. We all should walk away from sin. We all should do our best to live godly, live holy. That's our call. And if people struggle, we get that. But it's the, the arrogance that you want to have over and above your sin as though your sin doesn't that, that, that matter. That no matter what you do, you're still going to keep doing it as though God is going to be in approval of it. Okay. But one of the other reasons is that when people get caught up in a sin, sometimes we don't want to have that person judged. Thank you, AG. We don't want to have the person judged because we like them. Now, if the person involved in the sin is someone that we don't like, well, did y'all see what so-and-so said? We see it politically all the time, right? If a Republican does something wrong, then a Democrat is going to be the Johnny on the spot to say, did you see what he did? If a Democrat does something wrong, then a Republican is going to be Johnny on the spot to say, you see what the Democrat did? That's kind of how we, we, we kind of pick and choose our team, even in the body. But now, if there's someone who we know is just not part of the body, because uh, this doesn't happen with just the people that we like, who bring up these heresies and involved in things that we should call out, we're supposed to call this stuff out. But it also happens with people who we have no familiarity with, we don't like, or for some people, maybe they do. To John Tyson, who read my book, listened to it actually while he's walking around um, this area of town and was just weeping and <laughs> said that he had a word that I was like a gay apostle, apostle Paul. I don't know about that. We'll see. Yeah, that, that guy, this particular guy. And so you already know whatever, whatever he's going to say going forward, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Uh, it's not going to be tinged with actual um, scripture, but Let's listen to what he says. He, when I tell you that he's off, he's off. I wanted to talk about some prophetic words that I had this evening. And actually, we actually led on consecration. I was like, oh, yeah, spirit. Uh, <laughs> and the words I had were, were two, twofold. I felt like God wanted uh, to talk about people with clay feet. And his word was that our feet are weak. The part of... Jesus that the devil went for was, was his ankles. He said the part of Jesus that the devil went for was his ankles. Is that some new part of the Bible that we just didn't get in the mail? We got all, we got most of our Bible. Is that part of the Jamal Bryant um, Bible where we get 85% of the actual word where our Bible is 85% out of order. The, the devil went after Jesus's ankle, but he's not through. Humanity, we're not good at standing in faith, actually. We kind of suck. Abraham was justified when he was asleep. He didn't offer anything to God. His feet were clay. He was a magician, sorcerer, totally off in the like wilderness, and God just chose him. <laughs> he's just making up stuff. He's just, he's just making up stuff. But then again, he starts off on the bad side, on the negative side. But we're not supposed to call that out. Now, let's get to the scriptures. We'll get back to more of this, this, this foolishness. But if we want to say that we're not supposed to call it out and we're not supposed to judge, we got a problem then. We got a problem because one, someone needs to tell Paul that we don't call out brothers or even profess brothers. Paul in Galatians 2, 11 says, but when Cephas, that's Paul, I mean, Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face 
because he stood condemned. He says, for before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision. In other words, fearing the other Jews and the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him so that even Barnabas was led astray by the hypocrisy. So yeah, we do call out sin in this case publicly because what's happening is that sin, that foolishness is causing other people to sin. People who should know better or maybe they don't know better. Someone says that, that, that I'm blurry. I'm not sure what you guys are looking at. I've got both my screens up and, and I'm actually coming through and my, my settings are good. So uh, I'm actually coming out pretty good. Anyway, so that's an issue that it's clear. It is clear. Now, when it comes to a leader, by the way, you can say, yeah, but that's Paul. Paul is, Paul is an apostle, but he's calling out another apostle. He's calling out a leader. So let's just be clear that we are also to call out a leader. As a matter of fact, it's supposed to be uh, the punishment for the leader is more so than the lay member. He says in 1 Timothy 5, 19, he says, do not admit a charge against an elder except on the evidence of two or three witnesses. Now, of course, in our case, we've got little video evidence. And so uh, he says, <clears throat> as for those who persist in sin, what does it say? Rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand in fear. Yeah, madam, sir, who think that we're not supposed to judge, leave that up to Jesus, leave that up to God. What do you think God is? Who do you think God is using? Who do you, first of all, what if we took the same advice when it came to giving the gospel? Leave that up to God. Let, let, let God handle it. No, God uses us to deliver the gospel as well as to deal with the body. We are to counsel one another. We are to comfort one another. We are to pray, to praise with one another. We are to fellowship with one another. And we also are to discipline one another. When there are issues like this that come up, we deal with issues. Now, people bring up David as David the, the exact. First of all, let's just be clear. David was not chosen because he was special. David was chosen mainly, first and foremost, because he was out of the tribe of Judah. When the Bible says that God chose him, that he was a man after God's own heart, some versions kind of um, blur what, it, what the meaning is. He's not choosing David because David had this pristine, great, awesome heart. No, it was just God. When he says a man after his own heart, that means after God's own heart, after God's choosing from who, who God wanted. And God made it, God wanted to show that he's choosing someone who is not the top, who's not the best, who's not the greatest. Oh, by the way, though, when David did sin, first of all, David's not a pastor. So let's not compare him to anybody else. And first of all, the person we're talking about, be it Jamal, Brian, or anyone else, they're not David. Let's also make that clear. Let's make that distinction very clear, abundantly clear. That bad person we're talking about is not David. But even David was uh, rebuked. Was he not? We keep forgetting that David received a rebuke. How open was this rebuke? So open that it stands in the Bible, even to this day, that any of us can go and read that he was rebuked by Nathan. And more than that, there was punishment for his sin. Some people get involved in the sin and act as though there should be no punishment. But Corey, shouldn't you be able to sympathize? Shouldn't you be able to, uh, uh, to understand? Sure. But guess what? Even in my sin, you know what I had? Punishment. And you know what I had even more than that? I had repentance. Am I the same person? No. Do I do I uh, accept what I've done? Uh, do I try to gloss over it? Do I make excuses? No, no. And would never even dream about saying I'm the man. Well, but Cor, but that was so long ago. No, it wasn't. It was just last a few weeks ago when he was sitting there touting abortion, and he still hadn't claimed some of these kids. So let's. Uh, we are not going. <laughs> once he gets past that sin, and once he has made amends. And once he has demonstrated his level of repentance, and once he's demonstrated his ability to handle the text, then um, we can go ahead and, and move on. Now, he can't be a pastor biblically, even though he's going to keep functioning as one, because there's always somebody who doesn't care about the scriptures who wants to hear somebody else who doesn't care about the scriptures, as long as they're saying something to make them feel good. Why do you think this man speaks kind of in this, this socially appeasing way? Because these folks don't care anything about the scriptures. They care more about having their ears tickled, which is what the Bible says. 
That's what we have going on here. And you've got folks who do not want to call it out. Now, you can feel good about it all you want to. And you can think we're not supposed to do anything, but the Bible, Paul goes in on the church at Corinth about not doing things. Remember in, in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 1, he says, it's actually been reported to me that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that is not tolerated even among pagans. For a man has his father's wife. And look what he says. Notice Paul's rebuke, not to the person, but to the people who just stand in there. You folks on YouTube, or you folks at these churches, you want to just sit there and just let it go. Let God judge them. It's all right with me. Look what Paul says to people with that exact same attitude. He says, and you are arrogant. Ought you not rather mourn? In other words, Paul is saying, you guys should be ashamed of yourself. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. Look what he says. He says, let him who has done this be removed from among you. Some people just don't have the backbone to remove certain people to let them know that, hey, you got to go. But Paul says, purge the evil. Let's, let's, let's continue. He says, verse 11, but now I'm writing you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother if he is guilty of sexual morality or greed or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For, uh-oh, now for you folks who think that we should not judge, look what Paul's getting ready to say. He says, for what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those outside. So for the inside, that's us. He says, purge the evil person from among you. If you have a biblical ear, please listen to what was just read. It was on the screen. So if you don't believe me, look at your eyes. Let your, let your eyes look at the scriptures. Do that. Follow what he's saying. And now it's not just it's not just these people. It's not. It's even the folks that seem like, well, wait a second. I think that what he said. No, listen, there are a lot of people out there who do not handle the scriptures correctly, who lead people astray, who who present a faulty image of Christ and the gospel and what our roles uh, in the body is supposed to be. For example, someone like a Stephen Furtick. You believe it's in you. There's nothing anybody can put on you that can cancel what I put in you. Before you were born, I appointed you a prophet to the nation. I'm not in covenant with a person. I'm not in covenant with a political party. I'm in covenant with God Almighty. I am God Almighty. James. Now, we know about that when him saying, I'm, I am God Almighty, which is completely blasphemous. And he needs to be dealt with. But it's not just those, that statement. It's he said something curious. He said, if you listen to the word and don't do it, you're like a man who looks at himself in a mirror. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. My maker is my mirror. God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. You are not my maker. You will not be my mirror. When God said, I am to Moses, you know, my name is I am, he was trying to get him to see you are as I am. And it'd be one thing if it was just one thing or two things, but it's a multiple, uh, a, a multiple, uh, a large number. It's a constant stream of just heresies. Someone says, what makes a person a false teacher? Is it having teaching something falsely once or twice? No, because we there's something that we all believe in and will end up teaching. That's going to be wrong. That doesn't make us a false teacher. It's the person who intentionally does so, who has no desire, one has no handle on the scriptures and no desire to have a firm handle on the scriptures. And it's their, it's their uh, nature to constantly put out bad doctrine. I wonder if you would do that for somebody on your row right now. I know you had a hard week too, but magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. If you don't have faith today, borrow mine. You're going to make it. I said so. That, that, that listen, the, the music is playing. Folks are jumping. Can you just, the, just the atmosphere. Folks are excited. Yes. Amen. What did he say? I don't know what he said, but it sounded good. It made me feel good. 
That's all that mattered. That's all that mattered. I want, you know what? It felt so good, sounds so good. I'm coming back next week. Where's my checkbook at? Let me go ahead and write a check. Let me go ahead and 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 send money. Let me donate money to this ministry because it just makes me feel good. After a week, after a whole week of feeling bad, having the boss on me, the spouse on me, this and that happened with the kids in the house, he made me feel good. And so that's all I needed. It's, it's, it's a new drug without having to burn something. It's a new drug without having to wrap something up. It's a new drug without having to mix something up. It's a new drug. It's not giving heaven. I won't do that. But it's a new drug. That's exactly what it is. A, a different 77. Uh, it is the definition of itching ears. But the Bible says, here's the danger. When you follow these people, can I tell you what, what the Bible says you're supposed to do and what happens if you don't? Turn with me, or just look at the screen, Proverbs 14, 7. He says, leave the presence of a fool, or you will not discern words of knowledge. Leave the presence of a fool, or you won't be able to discern words of knowledge. The problem with some folks is y'all been around some fools too long. Some people have been in the presence of some of these fools too often that when you hear wisdom, when you hear the scripture, when you hear a sound word, you don't want to, it, it, that doesn't make sense to you. You can't discern. You have no ability to, you can hear, but it doesn't resonate. It doesn't resonate. You've got so much, it's almost like you've got all this bad stuff in you. Uh, the good stuff can't come, can't, it, won't, won't, it won't do any good. It won't do any good because one, you, you, you listen to the foolishness, you crave it, that's what you're about. And so when you hear sound teaching, when you hear sound doctrine, it's foreign to you. Matter of fact, to you, not you guys, you all are smart Christians, but to the folks that would follow these people, to them, sound doctrine sounds like heresy to them. They have no ability to discern. Now, can I tell you who is one of, I don't, I'm not, this guy might be the chief amongst those that say idiotic things. This guy is, he's at the top. He's at the top and as though he's, he's still, he's still, the man still has a following. How he has a following, I do not know, but our good old friend, Mr. Todd White. Isn't the revelation of my sin. The cross is actually the revealing of my value. See, in the world, if I'm going to pay for something, I'm only going to pay what something's worth. You were going to go buy a new car and that car was, you knew it was worth $22,000 brand new, right? And that was the sticker price on it. But they wanted to charge you four times that. Yeah. You would never do it because it wasn't worth it. Well, if something on the earth, the price that you pay for it determines its value, how much did heaven pay? Mm. How much did Jesus pay mm. to get us back? Yeah. I mean, heaven went bankrupt. So the value of a person is determined mm. by the price that was paid for it. Couple things. First of all, I'm never getting past those dreads. I don't, I, it just, it, it just doesn't look right. It just, uh, where's he from? Uh, where's he from? And I'm pretty sure he might be one of the few white folks that are wearing dress. But let's put that to the side. Did you just say, Mr. White, that heaven went bankrupt? Is that, did you really just say heaven went bankrupt? Hmm. Okay. Okay. You, you're proving our point when we say that you're not very bright. You, you are proving our point. And the way that Jesus knew everything was he limited himself as a man, humbled himself, became a bondservant, was tempted at all points yet without sin, and he did everything that he did as a man in relationship with God. He didn't do what he did as God, he did what he did as a man. So, see what he said. So, he was not God. He did what he did as a man. Now, now you need to understand this about Mike Todd because he's a person who said, I'm sorry, Todd White, He's the person who says that we are gods. We're gods. That, that's him. Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary. She is, he is born as a man. He's not born as God. He's God's son, but he had to do what he did as a man in order to make me right with God. If he was, were to say that, that he fully man and fully God, I get that, but he is nullifying the fact that he was also God. So he's just a man, just, just a man. That's, that's, that's pretty, <laughs> yeah, buckle up buttercup, uh, bankrupt. Oh, oh, no, you're asking me. Yeah, I, I thought you were saying, uh, <laughs> I thought you were saying that Todd White was bankrupt. He is that also. 
He is biblically bankrupt. He is, he's horrible. He, he, but people follow him. He's got a following. Why? Well, again, they have no discernment. Once you're around that stuff too long, you start sucking in them fumes and it kills your brain cells. The Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, I mean, yeah, 2 Thessalonians 3, 6, I'm sorry. Uh, now we commend you brothers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us because we were not idle when we were with you. Uh, now, these kind of people, stay away from them. Stay away from now. And Jesus, by the way, this isn't something new. Jesus said it was going to happen. He said, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and, and will show great signs and wonders so as to mislead, if possible, even the very elect. Now, he's not saying that he's going to, that they're going to lead astray the elect, but if possible, if possible to lead astray the elect. <laughs> yeah, they do. They, they're, they're looking out. They're look. by the way, guys, I figured out how to handle the, the comment section. I finally, it, I, I'll tell you all later how easy it was, but yeah, they, they're looking out for me, which is fine. Which is fine. I don't. I, I do care because I, I promise you this, guys. I really do care for them. They matter. Their souls matter just as much as us. They matter. You matter. And so it's not to to say that we don't have any concern or care for them. But at some point in time, Mister Wolf, we're gonna have to just put you to the side and deal with the sheep that you're biting, that you're attacking, that you're pulling away. We've got to also warn them that we warn them, and what do they do? That. It's going to be difficult for one of them that, ha that has enriched themselves, that has gained fame and prominence to walk away from that because pride is something else. To come up and say, I was wrong, it's not likely to happen, but it can. It can. Typically, it's a fall that happens because what does the Bible say about pride? Well, it goes before the fall. And so there's always, there's enough people out there who can testify what a fall. Listen, I can listen. If I can write a book about a fall, it, my, my fall wasn't one of those. Have you ever just failed? It's just like a little quick fall, a slip, bam, that was it. No, not me. My fall was I fell and hit everything on the way down. And then when I fell and hit everything on the way down, everything that was still up came crashing down on top of me. That was a fall. I should write a book about the fall, <laughs> about my fall. But when I got up, wasn't the same way. What you talk about a beat down that made me better. That's what I got. But it's it's, it's as though one they avoid that. Two those that have fallen they'll they'll ignore their fall. They'll glance over it. I want to stay in ministry. There's no repentance. Repentance schmentance. I'm not repenting for nothing. I listen. I got some. I got some ministry stuff to do. I got that. Listen. There's some women out there that I gotta go holler at. There's some money I gotta go pick up. There's some. There's some folks that I that that need to be talking about me. And so. Now, the Bible describes these people. The Bible describes these people, and it even also describes the people who follow them. He says this, Paul says this to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. He says, but realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable. Well, no wonder they won't listen. No wonder when you call these people out. And they will not listen. They don't want to talk to you. That's the biggest reason why, hey, listen, I want to have a talk with you, brother. I want to have a talk with you. I don't want to talk to you. Well, because the, as the Bible says, irreconcilable. Let's, keep, let's continue. Malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power, avoid such men as these. Now, I'll continue in a second. Thank you, Heidi. But inevitably, you're a hater. You, you're a hater. You're jealous. Or someone even said, why are you? Now, this is when I went against uh, calling out Jamal. Why I don't, a, a black man tearing another black man down? So if he were white, it'd be okay for me to, to, to call him out? Well, you, you're silly and racist, if that's what you believe. You're silly and racist. So no, that's that's not how. Let's let's continue with the scripture. He says, "For among them, 
are those who enter into households and captive weak and take captive or captivate weak women weighed down with sins led by various impulses, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The sad part is, ladies, that, that, that an awful lot of these men's ministry, um, and I say ministry loosely, are following or followed by a bunch of women. A lot. Bec and I, I know this for a fact that if you're up in the pulpit and you're preaching, they're always, they're just, it just is. It is what it is. Tell the truth, shame the devil. There are a bunch of women who like to see a man up front. I had on, you know, I, I, I'd be dressed nice and I'm preaching. And I heard one lady even say so much, go go to say that uh, I wish my husband was like that. Well, and so because a woman, a, a woman wants to have a man who is up, who's firm, who's forceful, who's leading. And maybe that's what it is with some of these women. We know it is with one particular person, how he <laughs> he's made his rounds <laughs> amongst the ladies, which is, hey, if that's what they like and that's what you like, y'all, you know what? Y'all have at it. You all over at New Birth have at it. Enjoy yourself like the Jacksons. Enjoy yourself. Because the time is going to come when you won't be able to. At least, at least when you're in hell, you can say, man, didn't we have a good time while you're wiping the sweat away and looking for some water while you're in torment. At least you could, at least you'll have those memories. At least you'll have those memories. Now, I can tell you that the suffering of this world is not comparable to what we're going to have in heaven. So I would recommend that you get away from this particular person. I would recommend that you move away from this person uh, and move to God. Even, listen, I don't care how great he says, how he sounds. The Bible tells us, he says, listen, even if we or an angel, Paul says in Galatians, from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be a curse. Now, that's the Bible saying this, that a person like these folks, he, the Bible is saying, let them be a curse. And they are preaching a different gospel. And it's now we've got one more person uh, who this guy is charismatic. Uh, he says things without thinking, but it doesn't matter because of folks. Who cares if it makes sense when we don't even read our Bible in the audience? The blood of Jesus, I need to prepare yourself. The blood of Jesus did not just erase the sins of Transformation Church. It did not just erase the sins of Christians. It did not even just erase the sins of believers. It erased the sins of the whole world. Sit with that. Get ready. Buckle your seatbelt. Let me say something that's really strong. People do not go to hell for sin. Jesus already paid for that. I am preaching. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're actually not. His death, his shed blood did not pay the debt for everybody. It made available payment, expiation, propitiation for everyone. It made it available, but it absolutely did not cover or pay the debts for everyone. No, sir, you are not preaching, but let's hear some more of you. This is the word of God. People don't go to hell for sin. He knew we were going to sin. He knew he put us in a fallen world. He knew all the way back from the garden we wouldn't be able to get this thing right. So he put a plan of forgiveness in place. And it kind of makes sense. What he says, that's the, that's the tricky part. When you hear this stuff, like... Okay, I kind of, I can see what you're saying. That kind of, all right, all right, that, yeah. Your wife, his voice did go up a few octaves. Uh, it did go up. Yeah, I, I, can, I can see what he's saying. Hmm. People, in fact, go to hell for sin. We stand guilty before God, a holy, just God, because of our sin. And the reason why we cannot be with him forever the goal is to be with him forever. The reason why we cannot be with him forever is because we've got this sin issue here. And so that's absolutely why we now our faith in what he's done in the payment of the blood, which is, which is why bad, a, a, a little bit of smidgen of bad doctrine can, in, can, can 
cause even further damage to the rest of your doctrine and anyone else that's listening. And so what his blood did, it paid a debt that's available by faith. If you place your faith in Christ and what he's done, that the blood that was shed was accepted by the father, then yes, then you go. But sin absolutely does send you to hell. Mr. Todd, it does. And this is one of the thoughts I want to end with, if it's okay. Jesus never reached his potential. Now, I know this is messed with a lot of people's theology. Because since I've been young, everybody's like, Mike, you need to reach your potential. Everything that God said and, and put in, inside of you, it needs to happen. But when I study the scriptures, he never reached his potential. One thing that all of these people have in common is they want to all, listen, guys, when someone is trying to say something profound, something new, something you've never heard of, run, 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 run. Now, <laughs> just run. There, no explanation, just run. When he died up on the cross, he said three words. He said, it is finished. What was finished? Not his potential, because he had the potential to overthrow Caesar. He had the potential to be a Roman guard. He had the potential to do all kinds of stuff. The thing that was finished was his purpose. Yeah, Joe, you know what? You said a mouthful right here. You said, why not just preach the word of God? That is the power to say, why not? Why? You know what? You deserve a gold star. That it, You know why they won't? Because it just makes too much sense. Well, it makes more sense, but also if I just preach the gospel, I don't look good. The, the gospel looks good. God does. I need to share in some of that glory. And so for that reason, I got to do more than just the gospel. But again, some of these people, some of the, yeah, he did, Jesus lover. Uh, he did attack you. Some of these people, and they don't, some of them either don't realize it or don't care um, studying the scriptures, going through them. No, stop. Listen, stop trying to find something new in the scriptures, guys. That that why? Paul says, how come every time you guys come together, every time you got a, a new tongue, a new hymn, a new revelation, you got all this new stuff. You ain't dealt with the old stuff. You haven't you haven't dealt with the scriptures proper, and you want something new. You got guys out there talking about they got brand new uh, hip hop demons and so forth out there that they had to get. It's, it's when I say it's crazy again, though, guys, it's going to be it's going to be this way. Where sound doctrine is in the minority. Foolishness will be the majority It'll be the mainstream. And I keep saying this stuff. I keep saying this stuff. Others so that we be where. And we cover sound doctrine. But we also have to cover this foolishness. Someone said just preach the gospel. Just, well, first of all, just preaching the gospel necessarily requires covering this stuff. Remember, I didn't write it. Jude did. Jude said, I wanted to write you to just talk about our common salvation, how good and awesome it is. But I found it necessary because some knuckleheads have creeped in uh, trying to be slick and smooth and charismatic. They've creeped in. So he says, I want you to do what? To defend the gospel, to contend for the faith. That's what I want you to do. One of my favorite scriptures, though, it, it, it has become one of my favorite scriptures, though. It really has. It really has become one of my favorite scriptures or favorite uh, grouping of scriptures. This is Paul's writing in 2 Timothy 4. Again, Paul's on his deathbed. Paul is getting ready to die. Yeah, I'll cover this, uh, uh, Marquette. I'm going to cover this a little later about this hip hop, these these hip hop, these urban demons. <laughs> Again, there's foolishness out there in the house. <laughs> and it's by someone that that, that I love. The person who said, I love him dearly. He doesn't love me anymore. He let the guy doesn't love me anymore, which is fine. Uh, but it, it's okay. It's okay. Proverbs, you are right. Uh, but one of my favorite passages or group of passages is Paul writing in 2 Timothy. He says to preach the word. Verse 2, chapter 4, preach the word. He says, be ready in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with, with complete patience and teaching. Meaning keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again. It may not, it, listen somebody is going to get it. Somebody is going to get this. Someone will say, I'm, I'm thankful. I, I wasn't even paying attention to what you what they were saying, but now I see it. Thanks be to God. Now, I got to ask this question. I got to ask this question. Why in the world are you so late? Matter of fact, why did you tell us you were late? You could just, you could just snuck in. You're honest. You're honest. 
Don't be late. Matter of fact, give me 10 push-ups for being late. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thank you for being here, though, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, he says, listen, for the time will come when these people will not endure sound doctrine. Tell me that's not now. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passion. He says, they're going to turn away from the truth. They're going to leave the truth. They'll want to hear the truth. Nope, 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 nope. Matter of fact, tell me some more of those old lies to help me stop thinking about the truth. I don't want to hear the truth. I want to hear, I want a panacea. I want a sugar pill. I want them to make me feel good. You got some good, you got some good drugs on you. I know it's messing me up. I know it's tearing me apart, but it makes me feel good. It makes my ear, makes my heart feel better. I got to go to work tomorrow. Can you give me something to make me feel better about when I go to work tomorrow? I don't want to have to deal with these people. But what does Paul say? And this is what I think is so cool for you folks who say we should not judge. Well, somebody needs to let Paul judge. Matter of fact, Paul was judging so good on his way out the door, out of the door, on his way to death. What's Paul doing? Paul is doing some judging. Verse 14 of chapter 4. He says, Alexander, named him by name, the coppersmith, did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. Beware of him yourself, for he strongly opposed our message. You mean to tell me on his deathbed, he says, beware of Alexander? Be, yeah, on his way out, I'm going to let y'all know about this other wolf, about this other heretic. This other fault. Yeah. So uh, are we to judge? Yes. Those of you who don't want to judge, that's fine. Sit to the side. Let the fighters fight. Those of you who have decided that I'm going to let God handle it. OK, fine. Let God handle it. Now, when God wants to start dealing with people and giving people crowns of when he starts re rewarding people for their work, their effort, for their diligence, for their um, uh, contending for the faith. Don't get in that line. When it's an error, everybody line up who has defended the gospel. Everyone line up who was not ashamed. Don't get in that line. Get, the, get in the back. Get in the back and wait for everybody else um, for God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. When he gets to you, pray. Pray and hope that when he gets to you, that you're part of that group. Pray and hope that he doesn't look past you. Pray and hope that you weren't really one of those folks who, when Jesus says, when Jesus says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, pray that he wasn't talking to you. Pray that he does know you. Pray that you know him. Matter of fact, pray that you know him enough and love him enough that you will contend for his word. Pray that you develop a love for him more than you love these false prophets. Pray that you love the flock more than you love the wolf. Pray that you'll stop handing out candy and food and water for the wolf and go and help with the flock. Pray that you go and pray. Now you can pray for them. Pray for them that they don't pray P-R-E-Y on the flock anymore. Pray that you grow. Pray that you will be found diligent. Pray that you'll be found fighting for the gospel. Pray that God finds you as a believer. If not, you have no excuse. God help your soul.